John Barrow of Cambridge University told me how there was a certain sense of unease amongst mathematicians when they first realised the peculiar properties of infinity. You can see here why people were very nervous about the idea of infinity, even more so than they were about zero 2,000 years ago. People were worried about infinity destroying mathematics even as late as 1900. They felt that if you introduced infinity into mathematics, then it was like a disease that would spread and render the whole thing valueless and illogical. But in the 1870s, there was one man who had the courage to wrestle with infinity. Georg Cantor used ruthless logic to demonstrate why there are as many even numbers as there are all numbers. His argument relied on pairing up every number with an even number, thereby proving that there must be the same number of each. You suppose you have all the numbers, and you then write down all the even numbers. Now, at first you might think, oh, there's only half as many even numbers. But it's not so if the set's infinite, because you can always set up this one-to-one -one correspondence. One goes to two, two goes to four, three goes to six, four goes to eight, and so on forever. You call these things countably infinite. So even numbers are clearly a subset of all numbers, and yet... What you're saying is that there are clearly as many even numbers as there are all numbers because you can pair them off quite happily, 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 3 to 6, and so on. That's right. This is a feature of infinite sets. If we just had five numbers, three even numbers will be a smaller set than the five ordinary numbers. But when the list is infinite, it's not true. Cantor proved that all whole numbers and all even numbers are both equally infinite. But what about if you compare all whole numbers against all real numbers? Now, real numbers include the whole numbers like 1, 2, and 3, but they also include fractions and irrational numbers and decimals, such as pi and the square root of 2. To assess how many real numbers there are, Cantor tried to write them down in some kind of order, because that would allow him to pair them off with the whole numbers and prove that the infinity of real numbers is no bigger than the infinity of whole numbers but Cantor ran into problems. If you make the next step to the real numbers, which have infinite decimal expansions that go on forever... Right, so these are numbers that you yeah, can't necessarily write down right. as fractions. Furthermore, you cannot arrange all the real numbers in, in some order so that you can say, this is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one, and if we carry on like that forever, we'll, we'll have arranged all of them in that sequence. Cantor had a clever way of proving if you try to do that, you miss nearly all of them out, is the point. So the set of real numbers is an infinite set that cannot be matched one-to-one -one with the set of whole numbers, and therefore it's a bigger infinity. And this is the truly mind-boggling conclusion. Some infinities are bigger than others. The infinity of even numbers is as big as the infinity of all whole numbers. But the infinity of all numbers, including decimals, is infinitely larger. In fact, Cantor demonstrated that there was a hierarchy of infinities, an infinite variety of infinities. This is one of the most complex concepts in mathematics, and struggling with it drove Cantor into severe bouts of depression. It didn't help that some other mathematicians dismissed his work, failing to see its beauty and integrity. Cantor showed that there is no end to this hierarchy of infinities. The arguments that he used to show that the rationals were countable, and more particularly that the irrationals were not, were a completely new type of logical reasoning. Beautifully simple and elegant, and you just wonder how people managed to miss these ideas for so long.